And let's get started. Benny, open it up with, uh, let's see, what does it say? Most of what I got are links that both showcase and gives tutorials for the kind of work I want to do in Blender for this project. But I also managed to model a hammer in Blender, which I found out has pretty gnarly modeling toolkit that's sort of like ZBrush. Yeah, Blender does have a lot of uh, sculpting tools. And if you're comparing Maya's sculpting tools and Blender's, Blender's blows Maya's out of the water. Maya. Yeah, Maya sculpting tools feel like garbage. Just oh, I don't know what they said. ZBrush. I was like, what? No. No, no, yeah, no. ZBrush is king for sculpting. Like that. That's oh, yeah. like it cannot be dethroned for that. But Maya has like some like dorky ass sculpting tools, and you're like, <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's like the play doh of sculpting. Uh, of, of like sculpting, dude. So it is it's kind of shit. But uh, but Blender has some has some legit ones, you know uh did, did you make this hammer with us yeah yeah i made i made a hammer with this i haven't even actually gone in to use any of the sculpting brushes i was going to do that today while we're doing our work session to try and carve in there and try and get different like surfaces on here to see what i can play around this hammer is just kind of like my experiment before yeah. i create the actual scene i want to 100 percent. yeah no that's exactly that's perfect that's exactly what this assignment's like intended for it's to be like the the uh, research and development uh, sort of sections for it. Um, but some people are working on full characters, you know, so it's kind of hard to do two of those, you know, but, um, but yeah, so some people will have like a doubled up assignment, but yeah, this looks, this is, this is perfect for like three weeks. Are you going to, so have you looked at um, stuff for making, making it look like it's, it's, it's 2d in here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Know? Yeah. The links I have, um, I can drop them in here if you want me to. Um, yeah, but that they're... might be interesting to look at, yeah. Yeah, okay, let me drop all the links I have found. Just copy. Where's Discord? Come on, Discord. Oh, it's right here. And there we go. It's a, it's a fuck ton of, of links. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You were not you were not lying. My no. God. It's a lot of different shit I'm gonna try and implement for this thing. It's I mean it's relatively easy. They're all building upon one another. Yeah. Um, but just learning it, it'll take a little bit of time. But honestly, mm -hmm. I've already got this far when it comes to learning how to model on here. Um so it's already like knocking out the first two. And then what I really liked is that it lets you um draw on the model itself within blender so it lets you use a pencil mm -hmm. or a brush or a pen whatever you want to use from the tools it has available to you um, and you can draw on the model itself which is really nice especially if i want to get a 3d model moving um, i can draw lines on there and uh, it'll look like it's a 2d object because it's got the outlines there already and then some lines describing shape some and form extra line yeah and and those extra lines will probably be they'll, they'll have that sort of liveliness of that that hand drawn because they literally are then is that is that the sort of premise yeah yeah some people were doing some uh because you can essentially do 2d animation overlaid on the 3d object as well and it acts like a 3d object itself it's really interesting some people are doing the grease pencil um someone did a waterfall and did a, a grease pencil waterfall with lines moving making it look as if the waterfall itself was kind of going up and down someone else drew on like a brick wall um to kind of make a look oh, yeah. 2D, and so it was really, really nice. Yeah, that that's that's sick. I'm definitely down for that. Um, for these bottom links, what are you what are you intending to do with these? For those bottom links, that's what's going to give it the extra push. Instead of just drawing on like a flat model, a texture you I would want. Um, those are helping me kind of carve into the object itself. That last last one there. Um, the one you're on there is just kind of showing me how to texture an object with color, like to fill it in. Mm -hmm. But this very, very bottom one, this is one that's like really, really intense. I'm actually looking at that one right now. Um, it's showing me how I can get like from that plain object, which looks like you can make it in Maya or anywhere and carve into it within Blender and make it look like it's actual stone or actual material. He's just like drawing yeah. right on there. And then I can go ahead and go over this object with line um, and make it look 2D. Benny, would you be willing to when you get to this step, mm -hmm. do it in ZBrush because this is kind of what ZBrush is for, mm -hmm. and it I I would I would just want you to get like an even more diverse um, sort of body of knowledge. Would you be willing to do that? 
as long as I can go ahead and yeet it back into Blender to get those 2D effects in there, I'd be perfectly fine with it. Yeah, yeah, because like this, this looks like they basically subdivided the surface a lot, um, and then they're sculpting on it, which is essentially what ZBrush does. That's like that's ZBrush's whole thing. Um, the only reason I, I, I would I would shy away from doing this in uh, in Blender is simply because ZBrush is better at this sort of stuff. So like, yeah. like that's the it's the only reason really for it. Um, and I'm also thinking for for this one, the texture painting, the texture painting in Blender. Um, if you could do this in Substance Painter with us when we get to the Substance Painter part of the class, like that'd be mm -hmm. cool as well. Because Substance Painter is a, once again designed specifically for that. Um, I know Blender has like great tools for it as well. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to be super bothered if you, if you stick with Blender, but, yeah. um, but like substance is like designed specifically for that part of the pipeline and it's like kind of industry standard. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, of course, again, as long as I can go ahead and port it back in and, and overlay those that grease pencil action in Blender yeah. with models that I export to uh, from ZBrush and Substance Painter, yeah. I have no problem doing that. If anything, it's going to be better for me to learn it. Um, just got to get Substance Painter. So we can get it from Beachboard, right? Or from... Uh, uh, from Straight from... Uh, it's not Pixelogic. What is it? Adobe. Uh, Adobe. Yeah, yeah. Straight from Adobe. Let me, let me search up Substance Painter. Uh, and I'm going to show some Substance Painter stuff today as well. So you can right. see what you can do with it. Right, right. Um, follow along for sure. It's not it's not gonna be like a follow along and do this. It's just kind of like a exhibition, like this is where we're kind of aiming to go. Mm -hmm. Um because I, I'm gonna show you how to bake all that hard surface sculpt detail that uh you saw in that video for that pillar. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you how to do that onto a low poly. It's called the high to low poly pipeline. It's super important for everyone to know that's like interested in modeling and stuff. Sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, it'll it'll just be a little a little teaser of what's to come. Uh, so it's the oh. painter, student version, here. Uh, but yeah, so you can download. Uh, Y'all don't have to do this today because we're not we're not officially moving into substance or anything. But what you can do is go to here, and you can get a a, a license. It, it'll require a little bit of information, but if you send that through, then they should approve you, and then you get a full license. Um, if we get to the point where you're doing that and then they're like, it's not, it's not happening immediately. You can try You can download the trial for it and then, uh, switch over to the student license later, you know, right, right, right. But yeah, but yeah, super dope stuff so far. I like it. I'm, I'm liking the progress. Yeah. Th this will be a, this will be a nice, nice little assignment for this. I think, uh, I, I think, I think you could kind of just straight up take this and go into ZBrush right now and start sculpt, like divide it up and start sculpting high poly detail on it. And, uh, and then uh, export that back into Blender and then we could bake out some maps, boom, bang. It'd be, right on. It'd be nice and nice and sweet. Um, David, right. Oh, wait, does anyone else have any uh, feedback for, for Benny? Any feedback, any comments? Sounding pretty, sounding pretty, pretty quiet out there. So I'm gonna move on. David, just really excited to see the final. Hell yeah, Tam. Tam's pumped. Tam is pumped. I am too. Um. So David, here you go. You got uh, you got this character. Um, the the proportions seem pretty good i'd say maybe the neck could be a bit longer in, in your in your current version here the neck isn't as long uh and i can see that you're getting to the point where uh you're about to do hands hands are going to take a little bit of time because like think about it, you have to do like the palm you have to like insert that mesh and you have to insert the mesh of the fingers like yeah I, I when i'm doing hands i even go as far as doing an insert mesh of each digit of that so it's just like a little sphere that i stretch out into that shape and then i do that for all the fingers right there uh and the thumb it takes a while 
Um, but if you get a good like base for that, you can also just export that and then kind of slap that into your future projects. You don't have to spend as much time on that. So definitely, definitely possible. Um, if you get a good one, uh, feel free to like port that over to your other projects. Um, but you know, be careful if you do that too at this at this level because we're going to be getting better at a rapid rate. You know, so uh, you wouldn't want to be like <laughs> you wouldn't have to have, you wouldn't want to like go to your next model and then be, have like a really good, well done character but the hands they look like they were your first attempt because you ported over your first attempt you know so so be careful there but yeah this is coming along great a lot of the proportions are, are represented uh pretty well pretty well i'd say uh in the lats in here um we're, we're losing a little bit of form compared to the the reference uh looks like this sort of bust area is kind of like popping a bit too much in relation to that core right like that anatomy has to be in there like uh she's got that that the the, the lat muscles on the sides so we want to we're going to be able to see that going up into the arm as you as you do in your source material at, at right here there's like a little bit of a a gap in there so watch out for that i see that in here you made her hips a bit larger you know which is which is fine it uh it helps for readability um but yeah so that's looking fine i'd say the knees they kind of they kind of pinch together a little bit too uh a little bit too sharply so um if you're gonna get if you're gonna slim the leg down to that size and it needs to, it needs to carry on throughout let me see can i just snipping tool this and then draw over it this is gonna be the most low level sort of draw over ever but you know whatever it'll it'll get the point across there's no undo so i could just ruin everything on accident but yeah so if if the knees are going to come down to to this point right here then you can't have this sharp out bevel right there it's going to need to kind of be a little bit smoother into the, into those forms up there um Alternatively, you could thicken up the kneecaps to support this sort of this sort of width or the, this this sort of width on the on the quad, um, and then carry that through the leg as well. But yeah, uh, definitely whip out the old anatomy books. Um, I have like just little little figures next to my like on my desk that I use for reference as well. Um, definitely recommend that uh it's all about that reference y'all all about that reference and yeah you're you're in a good spot though good progress good progress um i'll show you how to make these these shoulder pads pretty pretty nicely today um you'll you'll benefit from that one a, a lot uh you, you'll see that i'm gonna kind of just i would not sculpt these as they are right here i would instead uh just work on the underlying anatomy so i would just get her regular deltoid figured out and like what that looks like underneath and then we're going to use something called extracting to extract that shape out and then we're going to simplify it with z remesh and it's going to be sick it's going to be dope guys um but yeah awesome stuff awesome stuff anyone else have any any sort of comments any feedback? Okay. i had a question hell yeah uh, when I was using the clay builder brush, it worked on the thigh, so it added like form. When I went to the kneecap joint and then towards the calf, it started shrinking it. Is, is there a reason why? Same same brush, same clay build up brush. Yeah. You're using it on the were you holding alt? Uh no, I wasn't. I was just brushing it over the thigh, which added the form. When I went to the kneecap joints, it started like inversing. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what's causing it. I, I, I would kind of need to see it in, in front of myself okay. because normally that shouldn't be happening like that. <laughs> what you're describing sounds very odd. So I'm like, I don't know. I, I would need to visually see what's going on. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. Let me know if that persists. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, any other questions, comments for David? I think I might know why that happens. Maybe if there's like not enough polygons or like verts in there, then it's like it just doesn't know what to do, so it just shrinks. Mm, 
Maybe. Because that, so that, that happens more with the smooth tool than, uh, than clay buildup. Um, that can happen with clay buildup on surfaces that are really close to each other. But again, in these knees, they look like they have some thickness to them. So like, I, again, I'm like, I'm not sure exactly where that's coming from. But, uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd need to see that in front of myself. You, you could try to send me the, uh, the Z tool if you save it out as a Z, dot ZTL. Um, and then, then email that to me. It's still probably gonna be pretty big, but it'll be a lot smaller. I can show you that process if you want, David. Um, but yeah, so let's check out Aggressia. Okay. So Gracia, one of these, one of my tips would be to um, to work with uh, dynameshing some of these shapes. Um, it, it's basically a process of like kind of like you see how I can I can see in these polys that the that the lines kind of let me switch for my style again. The, the lines sort of go up and across. So trying to refine this form is going to be kind of hard because it really stretched out. Uh, I could show you how to Z remesh this, so it'll it'll be nice and simplified. Um, and I'd like I'd like to do that for for y'all in front of the class. But yeah, I'm I'm liking the proportions so far. You're gonna have to look out for these little sharp points down here. If you smooth this anymore, it's gonna crumble in on itself. Uh, make sure you do alternate smoothing on this instead, which is like you you press shift to start smoothing, then you click down with your stylus, then you let go of shift without moving it, and then you start smoothing. So it's gonna, it's gonna average out the points and kind of expand those areas. Uh, if they get too crumpled, use the inflate brush as well. It's called inflat, I'm gonna type that in the chat um, because it looks dumb, but it's, that's what the brush is called. It's not, <laughs> I don't know why they didn't call it inflate fully. But yeah, good, uh, good proportions. Um, Get those get those arms and hands and stuff in, and then dynamesh this together. Um, once uh, once all the all of that's like represented, and then you can move on to to clothing. Move straight on to that. Um, yeah, yeah, nice work, nice work. Uh, Sammy's got a ballet scene for us. Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah so yeah this is this is 14 seconds of of animation my god my god my god yeah this is gonna be sammy this is gonna have to this is gonna be a quite the quite the demon to slay um i I'd, I'd let me point out some things so this jump at the end a bit too far right so like the the quickness of the acceleration like i i know this is in like an early state but like the speed at which they're flying laterally through the air doesn't match up with where they where they were started like like they they, they slow in right here and then pop really fast so like Think about on people in the Olympics when they're doing a long jump, like they're sprinting as fast as they can because that speed is what's going to carry them across, right? So they have they have that long runway to build up that speed. Um, if you're going to sell something like as long as this jump, you're going to need to uh, you're going to need to to get the character accelerating up to this speed that this speed right here before they leave the ground um also uh this is you're gonna really want to use motion trails like i showed before to to clean up arcs on this one um and uh, yeah it'll be it'll be really useful but uh yeah it, a lot of this is just gonna be controlling balance of the character like right here on this lift up they're off balance because if you look at the silhouette right here um, oops, let's pause that. If you look at the silhouette right here, you have the, the core right over the leg, but then you also have like two limbs extending 
past that. And these limbs weigh a lot, right? So this character can't feasibly do this action. They're going to need to instead have this core shifted a little bit back, a little bit the screen left of that leg. So always pay attention to where your balance is on these. And here we go. There's a part that I've been having like big issues with. There's no timing on this also. I've just, I just put the poses in. Yeah, yeah. But, um, it's right after that the Shanae turns. It's like they jump really weird. And I don't know why that is. Um, with, it's right like, after um, she's like facing the front and then it like cuts kind of funny. Oh, right, right here. Is this it? Yeah. That little pop. There, all right, so there could be a key in there, an extra key on this frame. Another possibility is that you might have two keys that are really close to each other. Like I've had situations where I have a key on frame 149, I guess, right? But then I'll also have a key on like frame 149.1 and you're like, what the fuck? How did this even get there? But then like it gives this little popping effect. So so zoom in really close on your graph editor and check out like where those keys are because that, that there could be a sneaky one in there somewhere. Um, this could also be a key on like the main control like because it kind of looks like it's it's relocating the, the entire character right here. So so be sure to check that out and see like what what that's um, looking like, you know. Okay. But yeah, I'd say, yeah, just keep keep cranking away at this one. I don't think this is feasible for three weeks, you know, or two weeks now, like, uh, because it's just so, so long. Yeah. It's a lot of body movement, you know, uh, which is great. Like, you're going to learn so much from this. Um, but yeah, also, you mentioned timing and how it yeah. hasn't been timed yet. Um feel free to just straight up look at the source video and yoink that keyframe data. Like you can, if you can scrub that video, like based on frames, and if that video is at 24 FPS, you can just straight up just be like, all right, this character's right here at frame nine. And then they're at this pose at frame 13. So then you just boom, bang, you copy that same timing. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be real, very realistic. It's, it's honestly, Whenever I'm given like a rush job on animation, it's like this straight up, th that's what I do. I get someone to help me film me doing the action um, from the front and from the side, just for good, good reference. And then I sync those videos up into one video and then I just scrub through it. It's like almost like I'm doing visual mocap, you know, or like 3D rotoscoping, you know, um, and it's, super effective and you learn so much because you're like when you're going frame by frame and matching all that stuff you're noticing all these like tiny details yeah. super sick um let's see what else we got yeah mostly timing but yeah the pose the posing's getting strong yeah you just got to work how uh, work on how things interpolate into different poses like from here yeah. look at this like wrist you know like the, yeah the there's a couple of parts where the foot turns all the way around which is super creepy yeah so how to fix that um yeah. would you suggest i'm for that jump i'm gonna have a second camera underneath would you suggest like pushing the buildings together rather than i would say so yeah i would just shorten up the jump a little bit you know like bring, bring it into like a, a more feasible thing like bring it in like three or four squares okay and then uh yeah it was, so you're gonna do like an under under yeah. camera right here yeah so like, I just did right under right about there it's gonna like cut to the other camera mm -hmm. and then yeah that'll be cool Ooh, mikey likey very nice hell yeah good stuff yeah this, this is gonna be sick oh man it's gonna it is gonna be a lot of work though. like this is a lot of elegant i think it movement. helps that i know like how to do most of these things with my own body sort of so oh like, really it, damn i mean like not well but i know the <laughs> Like where it's supposed to be and what your foot's supposed to be doing. Yeah. So that's how I've kind of been figuring it out. Amazing. But, yeah. Uh, no, when I'm animating, I'm not still. I don't really sit still. Like I, I'll like 
I'll be, because I'm doing a game with a lot of swords and stuff, like I'll be miming like sword swings in my chair and kind of paying, like thinking about where my like center of balance is and like that mass. Like I'm, I'm always getting, getting up and, and getting kind of physical with it. So I'm glad that you're, you're doing the same. Like that's, that you'll learn so much that way. Very important stuff. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's looking great though. Um, any any uh, comments, questions from the class? Well, they're not, they're not saying much, but I'm sure they're hyped. I'm sure they're as hyped as I am. All right. Let's check out Ray. What do we got here, Ray? Here we go. Uh, yeah, it's rough, but you did a lot really quickly. Holy cow. Yep. Yep. It, it's just going to be a matter of uh, polishing it, you know, timing it and polishing it and get, getting all the clean arcs. Oh, man, the arcs are going to be wild. Um, yeah, Sammy, let me know if you, it, once you get to that step, if you want me to like go over uh, motion trail stuff again, because that'll be pretty important for that. I look forward to seeing the polished version. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. So this is, this is Ray's. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, <laughs> oh man, let me, let me get the, uh, let me make sure I'm sharing the audio. Uh, share the sound. And my God. <laughs> oh man, this is something. And yep, and here's the, the source. <laughs> this fucking scene. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. How did this make it into the movies, dude? Oh, man. Oh, my God. You have to nail, like, this clap that he does. Like, the, like this. Right here that like he does like a clap and a thrust at the same time oh my god this the if i can move through the hand rolls what the fuck dude what the fuck oh my god oh, i can't believe it <laughs> i can't believe it. oh yeah let's see how the let's look at this one more time <laughs> I can play it, but I got yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh, let's see what we got. So, so right here, I, I can see that there's a lot of rigidity in the spine right here. Uh, make sure, like, like, see how it's kind of staying as a, as a straight piece. But like, if I look at the silhouette, it, it maintains like a, like a rigid, like, line here and then if we look back at here when he becomes a big jackass and walks back out so he like on these poses we need to push to get like like his his spine has this sort of contrapposto or contra, contra, uh, i don't know that latin word you know where it has like hip sideways right here and then Uh, counterbalance and shoulders opposite tilt of that of that hit that's how he gets that uh quote unquote swagger all right <laughs> so so we definitely need to 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 get this in here right now in your animation on this side pose it's just straight up right and the, these hips are, are are flat shoulders flat we need we need to get hips uh, let's switch to a different color. Uh, let's do an arrow. That needs to become 
that needs to become a this. Boom. So hip up. The crossing leg needs to get straightened out there. It's going to need to get straight onto that. Actually, oh man. Sink sketch is so sick. So this is about where his head, uh, his hips would be. So hip needs to be bent like this, and then spine needs to be bent like this. Boom, shoulder up, and yeah, crossing foot as he's going over it. It's gonna be straight, and it's gonna be pushing up on that hip right there. Like this, this straight leg pushes up on this hip. And then since he has so much swagger, he doesn't need to fully support his upper body. So then it kind of tilts to the side. That's how you, that's how that pose gets sort of created, you know? Um, and then, yeah, you just draw the rest of the body over here. And yeah, so, so yeah, just try to get that into those poses. That'll really sell it. Um, and don't feel afraid to delete keys in this because you're going to have keys that are incorrect. So uh, when, you, when you get this pose in there, delete the keys that interplay into it, and it's going to look a lot cleaner. And then you just kind of then worry about those curves specifically and like when they, when they hit. Because um, if, if, if you're ever running into a lot of problems in your animation, like don't feel afraid to like simplify and like delete some keys. Don't feel afraid about that. Um, let's see here. Wait, now this is this my game. Sorry, I'm not trying to do viral marketing or uh, grassroots marketing, I swear. Um, where was Discord? There we go. But yeah, no, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Uh, definitely. Uh, so Ray, is this going to be a, I'm kind of picturing this as the three, three week project and then you move on to something else after? Yeah, it's just because uh, of the Mary rig, I was like, I couldn't really get like, I guess the, my foundation's yeah. down. I was like, Good you know what? experience with it. Yeah. No, I want to play around with this. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah. No, I, I love that. Good thinking. Uh, yeah. Awesome. It'll be it'll be sick to see what your next product is too. That way you don't have it, like it's variety is always nice, you know, especially mentally because then you get to hop onto something else too. But uh, but yeah. But yeah, it's looking sick though. <laughs> uh, good scene choice. Good scene choice for sure. Mm. Let's see. Let us see. Your keys really show that you studied the reference well because the energy matches that you. Yeah, I'd say the timing of them is pretty close. The time, the, 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 the time is really captured. But in animation, you'll find that oftentimes you need to push the bodies um, beyond the posing of the regular reference as well. Like if you if there's a, a moment that you want to sell an impact in, you're going to need to push that harder than it than it really shows in like live action. The only reason that we like buy live action is because it is in real life. Like our minds are used to seeing stuff like that. So when you have this this three D character in there, it kind of abstracts that. So we need to push things further to make them read. That's why exaggeration is one of like the main twelve principles, you know. Uh, but yeah, fantastic stuff. I'm gonna add a fire on this. Boom, bang. Firing all these up. Hell yeah. Um, all right. And Diana, we already talked about yours a little bit, but like I, even though it's not much, I do like what I'm seeing. I do like what I'm seeing. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, yeah, I can just tell that you're, you're, really thinking about form and, and, and how the face is constructed, you know? Um, I would love to see reference posted alongside this, see what you're kind of trying to match, what, sto what sort of uh, style as well. Okay. But yeah, that'd be, that'd be super sick. But yeah, it's coming along well. I like the, yeah, yeah, a cute smile, a nice jaw. Yeah, exactly, right? Like I'd say that this part right here, really well done. Um, you might want to get a little bit more of that, like, if you look at like closely at the face, it kind of dimples in on like the underside of that like corner of the mouth. Kind of kind of dips in. Um, and so so I think I think the mouth could definitely benefit from from a little bit of that. It's it's very subtle. You, you have some of it right here. I would just kind of push it a little bit further. Um, of course, like the the, the 
the nose and the, the eyes and stuff, I, I just need to be a little bit more developed. Um, I would probably smooth out this bridge area right here a little bit. Um, so instead of being like one plate right there, uh, maybe just like maybe just go over with the smoothing brush a little bit and kind of refine that. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 coming along really well. I want to see I want to see more of it. Uh, Diana, what, what what's the scope of this project? Are you going to do a full character, um, or are you going to do just the the face for like the three week sort of project, or what? Uh, I was hoping to do a full character. Okay, yeah. So that's going to be that's going to take you to the end of the class. Like you you probably won't have much time to to do anything past that. Um, and this goes for all you full bodied character people. I don't think we like, this isn't feasible to do in like three weeks, you know? Um, so I really want to, I'm going to, I'll, I'll work on a, a I'll, I'll show you guys each step of the pipeline as well for that. Um, because we're going to try to re topologize all of these characters, which is rebuilding the geometry in Maya and then, uh, projecting all this high poly detail onto that. Uh, low poly model. That's uh, what my my animation computer animation one students are doing right now, and it's very important. So, and we're going to talk about that today too. So don't worry about it. And then we've got uh, we've got Che. Uh, I'm I'm liking this posing already. Like I can already see it. This is this is going to be a dynamic scene. You know, uh, this pose is very very strong. It conveys a lot already from like the thumbnail. You know. And uh, that's a kind of the essence of a good of a good pose in animation, yeah. Um, all right, so let's, let's give it a check out. Oh hell yeah! Hell yeah! Okay, so it, it's it's just basic. It's almost like a three D storyboard right now, which is which is completely fine. Um, fighting this huge lion beast like this yeah this is gonna be sick uh che were you intending this for the for the uh three weeks or for the the rest of the class oh i want to ask that that point can i work on it by the end of the semester yeah 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 i, I would reckon like if for that i would recommend um uh, extending this this part out, uh, mm -hmm. you, like I don't know what the character is going to do during this. It's up to you, um, but like the, just the amount of time that's allotted right here, like one, two. It's like it's like two seconds. So I, I would I would stretch that part out a little bit, um, add a few seconds on there, and uh, I don't know. It's up to your choreography. You know, you're going to be able to choreograph that whole scene and make it as cool as you want it to. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I like where you're going with the scene. Okay. And I, and I would say that, um, yeah, two characters fighting, that's always going to be difficult, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, that'll definitely take you to the end of the class. And I'm excited to see how it turns out. Yeah, it's much harder than I thought. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, just, just wait until you have like, uh, like contacts, because like if the swords clash at all, like they're gonna need to be very clean looking, you know. So, uh, but yeah, but nice, nice block out. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Oh yeah. Oh, and so I want to ask if there is any good reference, because it was really hard to find the proper poses. Mm. Basically, like a lot of action movies, <laughs> like. Oh, um, you can you can also feel free to look at, um, oh shoot, there's like something that I'm thinking of that's like from that sort of cam as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, sorry, I'll, I'll probably get back to you on that, but r remind me in a bit, cause I got, that's gonna take some just Googling from me to find some stuff. Uh, but I would, I would a hundred percent recommend that you, um, that you film yourself doing it, you know, like it's gonna, it's gonna be awkward, you know, but like, it, then, then you're not like just copying like, another scenes, like choreography, you're, you're kind of making up your own, which is like amazing. 
you know, but um, if that's not your style, then you can, you can definitely uh, find some, some live action and uh, sorry, one second, I'm just writing a note so I don't forget. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no problem. No problem. Any other notes for Che from the class? Anyone have any questions, comments? All right. All right. Sounding, sounding like we're good to move on. And uh, so let's see what Tam's got for us. Oh, Tam. Really for, looking forward to yours, Che. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. Like, uh, I'm sure it's going to be dope. Um, all right. Tam, this is looking, this is looking great. This is looking fantastic. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. You're doing this Zable character, right? Something yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I like this little monster in the in the cup. Holy shit. I, I do want to see if I can do him as well. Cause like um I I thought about this last time as well, like um having him in a job, but like he kind of moves like a lava lamp. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I couldn't figure out like what the mechanics would be for that because like I feel like I'd be modeling in ZBrush and like animating it, I guess, in Maya or something. Uh uh yeah. He wouldn't be a ZBrush thing, he'd be like like the the cat, he, even he whatever would be, would be, yeah, he would be something else. Yeah, like a like a some sort of particle system. But there's also mm -hmm. like, uh, one second. Let me let me find. So this won't this won't be exactly what you're thinking of. Oh wait. Oh okay. Pixels. And this won't be usable because this is for a game engine. But um, there's some things like this where uh, characters are made out of just a bunch of different little spheres. See this? Oh, oh that's cool. Okay. Let's see if we can, yeah, see how that. <laughs> so, like, mm -hmm. something like that is kind of what I'd be thinking of for that character. Um, yeah. yeah. And and like the, oh yeah, like look at that. Like they're just creating a pumpkin out of. Uh, it's kind of called they, they call them booleans, uh, but the the programming behind it is called ray marching. Um, like that's like that's like the tech that's behind it. Oh yeah, like this through that waterfall. What the heck? But yeah, so like that's kind of what I would think would sell that guy really well. But I would say for for the time being, focus on uh, focus on the on the main character. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. that you got going there you go and it, it, they're they're coming along fantastically i see that you're using the sort of paul deasy method of, of splitting yeah, I was them watching, i was watching his videos as well like i kind of like them yeah right no it, it's 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 mm -hmm. amazing i i i love it i love this stuff um i would say you have uh we don't have much to like the, the, we only have one angle of this face, so it's going to be a bit difficult. Um, mm -hmm. These eyes, they might end up being a little bit more flat. You might have to cheat them a little bit to get the yeah. desired effect. Also, I'd mm -hmm. say the nose is a it like extends out too much in our sculpt currently. It looks like it's more of like a sh like a mm, what is it? It's like a, a smaller aquiline, I think. It, less less of an angle. Like see mm -hmm. how our angles like this out here, but in this drawing, oh, yeah. it's more like a like a twenty degree angle away from the face. Like that's like mm -hmm. the so so I, I would kind of bring that nose in a little bit. Um, you might run into some some annoyance with uh, the the nose in general. Like I think it might be a bit too wide for, and it's like really faint lines, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's gonna take some some work for sure. Mm -hmm. um definitely get the lips represented in there 
so we can see what that looks like on the character because that that's the spacing between the lips and the chin and the the lips and the nose is like integral so yeah. once you get that in there it's gonna it's gonna reveal a lot of um like proportional issues we, we may have with the model yeah. Yeah. uh the ears look like they might be too big right now uh in mm -hmm. relation to to our, our reference right here uh like they they kind of stop below like right at the bottom of the nose where whereas these ears continue okay. for a little bit um also the tops of them are like uh kind of where the pupils like line up and they, these people are looking down so probably like right here so they're about like 50 percent too large maybe a little bit uh more than that so so feel free to scale those down at the proper spot um this is looking good uh it, you're gonna need to pull these legs a little bit apart because if you dynamesh this together uh some of these faces down here will get combined they'll, they'll get yeah, uh, yeah, combined definitely. in there um you'll also have to uh we can't see much of them but I, I would say the let me get the snipping tool out again do, 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 right here let's do a nice little draw over customize pen okay does this work yeah right, cool um so the calf that's going to need to be the, the 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 like kind of most bulging parts gonna need to be out higher up here mm -hmm. um to match the, the this this one that we see right here and it's gonna taper in nicely this is gonna be a straight line right here as well uh the front of this boom mm -hmm. um you also might have a little bit of an issue with uh like where the hips are um you would instead probably want to have those be a little bit further out okay yeah and, and then and then th this part right here would be brought in closer so you get more of that spine upturning feel it would bring this out a little bit so it that'd just be a bunch of move brush stuff you just go in with your your move topology brush start <laughs> pulling those shapes around uh, but I love I love this junction that you have with the the hip and like the outside of the thigh like that that looks great there. Uh, doesn't look as good in this perspective. Um, make sure that you yeah. get you get the the proper proportions in there. But but again, like the, uh, you're going to be covering up a lot of this with clothing, so it doesn't really matter. I would say focus more on these more general changes because yeah, yeah. you know no one's going to see her butt. They're only going to see the skirt. You know. Um, yeah, yeah and this this jacket shape you know so yeah i would say get get some hands in there and yeah just keep refining the the, the face is going to be the hardest part i think to to get um convincing yeah, definitely. <laughs> like I, I think even you might benefit from from going in and, and drawing this same character like looking straight at you and looking to the side because we already have the three quarters you know so mm -hmm. Um, it wouldn't hurt to have all all perspectives in there, uh, but yeah, my, my another instinct of mine here is that like the 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 overall head might need to be a bit thinner, just a little yeah. bit thinner, um, to match this sort of that 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 side of the face right there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's coming along really nicely though. I'm liking this. I'm liking cool, it. Cool, cool. Can't wait to see when you have all the all the stuff modeled out. Um, yeah. yeah, let's keep. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no problem. No problem. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Any other notes for Tam? Any other notes, y'all? Sounds like y'all are. Sounds like y'all are just vibing. Oh yeah, there we go. So that's it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So let's see. Um, 
seesaw, Dan and Chase and Ray. Oh, Ray, I like the uh, update to the Merlin, uh, Merlin icon. Big Sword in the Stone fan we had. Uh, let's see. Gracia. Ricardo already talked to me. Uh, oh, on. Do you have any any in progress stuff for us? Any in progress stuff to show? I, this is, I'm. I'll, I'll give the same question to Yi. Any in progress stuff to show? I don't have. Ah, Yi, are you going for modeling or animation? Or something else? Something new? Some new frontier, maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, be sure to pop open ZBrush and sculpt along with us. Um, I don't even know if, if On is here right now since he, he didn't, didn't respond. Um, on, I'll just type in the chat for if he gets back. On. Let us know if you have anything to show. Oh, there we go. All right. So let's go into some ZBrush now, y'all. Let's go into it. Got my water, got my tea, got my everything set up to go. So I'm just going to go over some um, sculpting things. Uh, everyone with clothes, everyone uh, with armor, pay attention because it's going to be all about kind of getting those forms out. Um, see, brush. I'm looking for my rat sculpt. Let me close all my other programs as well. One second, I'm gonna let ZBrush fully load. Oh God, so many undo steps, no. Um, actually first, let me, let me write up a list.
So I'm going to show some of y'all. So I'm getting questions from other students. Don't talk to me right now. Oh. I'm going to show, so Grecia, I'm going to show you how to sort of Z-remesh this to get even geometry that we can really sculpt with. Uh, same for you, David. You have a little bit of stretching in here as well. I'll show you how to kind of simplify these forms because we don't need to, we don't need them to be super high poly right now. Um, then I will show you how to, well, like, I guess before that, I'm going to show you how to export these to be small because I'd like to show you guys on one of your models at some point. Export ZTL. Yeah. Uh, on, are you doing modeling or animation? doing animation okay hell yeah oh yeah um here we go so we have this this rat guy in here and uh the file for this guy so i'm showing you guys how to export some dot ztls uh this is primarily for oh well, this is for everyone in zbrush but also um because uh, I want I want to get Gracia's file right. I want to get Gracia's file to show how we can sort of uh, redo some of this geometry that's like being stretched out a bunch. Um, so Gracia, follow along with these steps. So right now this file is like a hundred megs, uh, maybe even larger, um, and that's just absurd. You know, it's way too big, way too big. So this will help with just file size in general. But it's also going to give us um, like something that we can send over to me if things go like really wrong. Uh, our first step is going to go to sub tools. So open up your sub tool menu. And this is this is for for Grecia right now, but um, could be for for anyone really. Um, and we're going to go to the merge menu and make sure you have everything visible that you want to send over to someone. And this is what I'm fine with. This is exactly what I'm expecting. Uh, and we're going to go to uh, merge visible. So, boom, we click merge visible and nothing changed, right? Nothing changed. Well, what actually changed is that it added it added up here a new merged tool. So it'll be merged underscore something. That's in your tool, uh, your little tool menu. If it's like too high up, you can always reach in here and kind of scroll up and down. I'm just left click dragging in there. Um, and it'll, it should be in here somewhere. So when you click on that tool, boom, right here. Nice. So this is what this is what it merged together. You'll notice that my sub tools have all been squashed into one. And what we can do is export this. We just go to export tool. Boom. And uh, I like to do, let's see. Oh, no, I'm dumb. Sorry, not export tool. This is how you get it into something that you can bring over to Blender or Maya by going to, uh, I, I usually do FBXs with this instead of .objs. But yeah, so if you do FBX, then you can send that straight over to Maya and you just in Maya open and then file import and import that FBX. Uh, what we're actually looking for, my bad guys, is save as. When you save as, it's gonna do a .ztl You'll just do rat merged uh, art. I'm not looking for 426. I'm looking for 427 scenes sculpt. Um, and I've already done this once. So I'm just going to do it again. And I'm saving that out. Files saved to disk successfully up here. Cool, cool. And so we can look 
if you look at my C drive, one, I don't have a lot of space, so I want to make, maintain small file sizes. Um, let's go to my desktop course materials. 427, scenes, sculpt. And let's see. So you can see my, my project is like 300 megs right now. It's a lot. That is a lot. But my rat merged. It's only, it's only like 12 megs. Only 12 megs. You can almost send that over Discord. That's how small it is, you know? So, uh, Gracia, please save out a ZTL file for me and then send that over to me. Uh, you, you can email it to my, my email. I'll type it in the chat for you. M-E-N-R-I-E-T at gmail.com. Ooh, right there. So yeah, uh, just a quick, oh no, that's no, auto-saving. Just a quick little recap. First step was to go to your, your, your source thing. Your source sculpt with all your different sub tools set up. Uh, and then you just go merge visible. It's going to pop up a new merged version in here. It's probably called merged underscore whatever. And then click on that. And then you do save as. So just a simple, simple three step process. Nothing too wild. Nothing too wild. Just a little three piece, little three piece combo for y'all. So, Gre Gracia, let me know when you're sending that over. Just checking my notes, no problem. No problem. Let me know if you need me to go over those steps again. Hi, Mike. I'm in the merge menu, but I don't see the um, save as option. Oh, so you, you're in the in the sub tool menu then, right there. And then you're you've already merged it down. Um. Yeah. So I'm in the sub tool menu, and then I went to the merge section. And you did merge visible. Uh, I have merge similar available, but it won't let me merge visible. Okay. So in your sub tools, is there just one sub tool? yeah oh yeah okay so that's fine that, that's that's what merge visible does it basically takes everything and combines it into one sub tool um tell me are is your is your character all like this lighter tone or do you have one thing selected in there and then everything else is darker yeah everything like only the lower legs are selected and everything else is dark so it kind of looks like this e yes okay so do another favor uh hold control and then left click drag off the mesh. So I'm like not touching any part of the mesh over here. So. Okay. Because that's that's called a mask. So basically whatever you do in ZBrush, it's not gonna affect those, those verts, you know, that have been masked off. Um, and I wanna make sure that everything exports nicely. So now, uh, with everything kind of like bright and lit up like this and in one sub tool you can just go to save as at the top here it's in the tool menu versus sub tool so sub tools 
right under that tool menu. So you can, if you can't see, you can always drag up on this. And you're looking for save as. Okay, I think I got it now. Oh yeah, so navigate to that new .ztl. Mm -hmm. And um, what is its file size? Let me see, it is one MB. One MB, hell yeah. So you can just feel free to uh, drag that into um, the art sharing channel okay. on Discord. Then I can just grab that on my side. Yeah. There we go. I downloaded it. So now, so now we can, uh, if you import a tool into your, into your scene, uh, a lot of the times it's going to replace this sub tool. Um, and I'm fine with that. I'm not bothered. Uh, but that's just a, to let you guys know. Downloads. Oh, oh, sometimes you can't. Okay, so I need to load tool as well. Um, so I'm going to go up to load tool. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. Do polysphere beep right there. And should be good to go. And so there's a few things. Your symmetry is also a little bit messed up. Symmetry is a little bit messed up. Um, so I'm going to do geometry, modify topology. I'm going to see what a mirror and weld looks like. Boom. So now it's symmetrical. Um, and then you just go over this stuff with the smooth brush. I'm using alternate smooth because it kind of thickens that up, doesn't destroy the form as much as regular smooth. Sorry, the ZBrush is going slow for a second. But you'll see on this stuff, some of it's kind of difficult to work with because it's all stretched out like this, you see. Um, it's a little bit annoying. Um, so one thing I like to do after this is been all, all made symmetrical from from that mirror and weld what you can do is first split then split to similar parts then do okay and then it'll keep uh it'll keep your different shapes into uh different distinct sub tools this is okay that's the neck um and then we what we can do with so say Look at, look at these legs, right? So, so now, now that these are split up into sub tools, we can just hold Alt and then left click to swap between them. So you can see it's highlighting the different tools. Uh, what we can do for these legs, go to geometry and we're looking for Z remesher. And watch what happens if I click same and turn on my polyframe. Right, so you can see how stretched out some of these, some of these lines are. And if I click Z remesh, it's gonna think for a little bit, and then boom! Look at that even topology. Look how even that is, y'all. God, so so nice to work with now. So nice to work with. And I'm just alternate smoothing a little bit. A little bit of smoothing. Um, and we can even cut this in half. So if I Z remesh now, oop, see how it got even like lower poly? Do it again. This kneecap is getting a little bit small though. So let's 
size that up. So yeah, that's basic, basically, you're gonna be doing a lot of Z remeshing on these different sort of sub tools in here. We can fix some proportional stuff on this, give a more defined calf and get that sort of like the, that meat behind the knee into the correct spot. Oh yeah. So see see how I just simplified that down with Z remesher and then it's a lot easier to work with. I'm gonna do the same for this upper torso. You know. Z remesher. I'm doing half and boom. Nice workable geometry. Nice workable geometry. Whoops. Clay build up. Get a little bit of that. That sloping spine in there. Let's do the same for this Z remesher. And oops, let's do half. Probably gonna have to do a few of those. And we can strengthen up that booty right there. And give more of an abdomen. The same for this because that admin has to connect somewhere. Yeah, so that's always always the workflow. Just kind of go in with your basic shapes. Once you get them into the spot, you just kind of Z remesh them, you know. Might need a little bit more definition on this, so I can always double that. And when, so now when I Z remesh this chest. Gonna think for a little bit. Boom, there you go. So we can get some of this anatomy in there as well. And just move this down. Let's do the neck, which we're gonna Z remesh half. Right here, you'll see, boom, bang. Goes through, it samples it, and there you go, it's nice and low. Nice and low poly, easy to work with. Easy to work with. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. I you can do the same thing with your with your insert mesh spheres. So if I go to my IMM primitives brush, where is it? I am M primitives I'm looking for. There we go. So if I was to make the arms for this character, I don't know the actual reference, but boom, just put that in there. Uh, I always like to give them a, a deltoid because it is a pretty key muscle, and especially on a, a character that seems as toned as this, I would think that that deltoid would be noticeable. So let's get that in there. And then I'm going to use the IMM Primitives brush again and drag out another one. And I'm just gonna use Move Top Logical as always. So get that going. It's kind of getting flat, right? So I'm gonna use Alternate Smoothing to sort of give that another pill shaped. And I'm going to move this into position. I might have to use my inflate brush for this. So there we go, inflate. It's going to expand this surface. And we can always smooth it back down. Get 
But yeah, I, I want you guys getting comfortable with this sort of workflow. I am in primitives for each each large part of the of the body. Um, and then as you see, I'm gonna un unmask this. Then what you can do is if you, you wanna work with these individually, I always like to split them into a certain sub, a different sub tool. Uh, so you just go to sub tool. Uh, you can do group split, uh, I like similar parts. Boom, bang. And then uh, if, this, if this isn't like, if you wanted these deltoids to be separated, you could also group split. Boom, right there. So now, now they're separate as well. And then you can just Z remesh these. Z remesh half. Boom. Watch this. Boom. Easy. See how they, the lines actually follow the flow of that muscle now? Like it's going to be a lot easier to sculpt on this way. A lot simpler. Geometry, half, Z remesh. Boom. We can do it again. Z remesh half again. There you go. So yeah, definitely get used to that sort of process. Definitely get used to that. This is all being uploaded and recorded to YouTube? Yep, absolutely. 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 There we go. And for this stuff down here, this is like, I'm worried about pinching for this. See how much it can pinch if I just start smoothing on it. Uh, this is what alternate smooth does. See how it doesn't pinch it instead, it kind of just pulls it in. Um, if you do pinch, just remember you have your inflate brush. Uh, it's under I N F L A T right here. No E at the end. You can just push that out right there, right? Just push that out. Uh, and then, so that's, that's a, it's a big help for when you're running into that problem. So don't forget about that tool. All right. There we go. So now I'm, I'm just going to save this tool out. I'm going to do the same method as I did before. Merge, merge visible. And we have merge polysphere right here. And I'm just going to save as, save as ZTL. There we go. And then let's see if it's small enough to send back easily. I think it should be, yep, 800 KB. Mm, delicious. This shit is delicious. So, Gracie, feel free to uh, grab this. Feel free to grab that ZTL. And then on your side, you'll just have to, uh, instead of like file open, you'll just have to go to load tool up here and you should have this new Z remeshed sort of uh, topology if you wanna work with it like that. Um, keep in mind that if you Z remesh, like, a, a one, like it works on the whole sub tool. So if I Z remesh right now, it would do uh, all of the body at once. That's why I like splitting it up into sub tools and then just clicking on each individual one and working on it that way. But yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so let, let me know if that works. Cool. Thing. No, no problem. No problem. Um, I might show the. I might show the clothing demo on this character, if you don't mind, Garcia. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so, simply because the the rat already has clothes, you know, no point in reclothing them. Oops. Uh, Gracie, keep in mind you might have to turn on symmetry again when you load that tool. And the hotkey for that is X. You just press X and it will, 
you'll see like the, like the two little icons. So you'll be able to, you'll be able to know that, that you're going to be doing symmetry stuff there. Um, but yeah, so let me just finish up the rest of this body. Or just enough for the, the demo's purposes. Oh man, okay. There we go. And then let's get some feet in there as well. Uh, Mike, uh, ZBrush won't let me open the file. It's because it's like a newer version, so it won't uh, open okay. on my end. Um, let me send you an OBJ then, and then you could open that. Uh, so let me go back to, uh, this is the merged project. So let me export. Man, that's unfortunate. That is definitely yeah, Ruth. Sure. Yeah, because it'd be so simple to send back and forth you guys that way. Um, OBJ shouldn't be too bad, though. There we go. Luckily, we're really low poly right now. Otherwise, OBJ wouldn't work. There we go. So download that OBJ file. And uh, yeah, so instead, uh, does, I don't think load tool works with, yeah, it does not work with OBJs. Um, so you'll have to go to import and then it will uh, import it into the scene and replace the sub tool that you're on right here. But yeah, so that that should work because OBJs are like the most basic 3D file. It's like it's like the JPEG of the 3D world. Right here, there we go. Just getting some shape in here before I move on to clothing stuff. All right. Okay, I think this will work. I think this will work. Okay, so once you have all your body proportions into um, into like a, a, like a decent level, you know, uh, sorry, it's auto saving. Of course it's going to auto save right when I start talking about moving on. Um, our next step is to sort of get this to be all one, uh, skin, one, one chunk right here, right? The way we're going to do that is Dynamesh. Remember Dynamesh is good at combining Z mesh is good at rescanning uh, a subtool and getting clean, cleaner topology. Something that's good for sculpting. So what we're going to do is Dynamesh, and uh, you do this once you have the hands and stuff in there too. Uh, you might have to Dynamesh at a high resolution for the fingers, because otherwise uh, the the webbing between the fingers, like this empty space, can get welded up sometimes by Dynamesh. 
Um, but for this character right now, we don't need to worry about that too much. So I'm going to go to Dynamesh resolution 128. See how it just rescanned all that, all that geo and gave us some nice new geo right here. Like it, it, it's, it's a pretty wonderful tool for combining stuff like that. Uh, of course, you need to really refine some stuff at this point too, you know, like you can see all these little joints and stuff. Um, if you brought, if you worked really hard on your, uh, your shape version, like the, the shaped version of everything, then this step won't be too bad because these seams won't be super noticeable. Um, I might go down in resolution a little bit, just so I'm not working super high poly. There we go. But we can always refine in here, you know, like this, this deltoid pops out way too much. I have to dial that back. This elbow is non-existent. We would get something in there, sort of represent that. This is a little bit weird. But yeah, so so feel free to refine after you do that, right? And like this doesn't look super natural. Have to get those main back muscles in there. And you know. Fill out everything, make sure everything is smoothed into the proper spot. So yeah, there's a lot of refining at this step, you know, um, depending on how developed your, your uh, different insert mesh shapes were. Uh, but it's not, it's not too bad. Like, look at like what we got already. Like it's pretty, pretty nice, pretty nice. You can always build out the things that you need to all the things back you know but it's a, it's a it's a great workflow you know um but now we need to get some clothes on this character right our characters have costumes and so uh i don't have gracia's design but i'll show i'll show what david's would look like because david has clothes and some hard surface type stuff um so it's a it, it's a it's kind of a similar workflow um, for both of those. It's just slightly different on how you work with what we extract out. So let's look at David's design. So if we go up here, beep, right there, we have this sort of under underneath sort of wetsuit, almost like sealant, rubbery skin, uh, or not skin, like a like a like a wetsuit, like I was saying. Um, and then you also have these like these gloves with a little rim on here, and then these hard surface plates. Like these plates look like they're made of metal, therefore they'd be hard surface. So let's start with um honestly, like the, the wetsuit could just be like this model that we have here, and then just textured. So like in the texture in substance, we could go in substance painter. We could just paint on some lines across this, and we we'd be able to call it a day. Um, that would be completely fine. Um, but let's let's see how we would get like a belt on this, right? Uh, and it's very very simple, very easy. Um, this isn't one of the formal steps of that, but I'm going to show you Z remesh because Z remesh is a good practice. So I can get our poly frame. And then let's do the same. Let's just Z remesh this, you know. Boom. See how it turns out. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. You just get it, it, it does like you might have noticed that it was multicolored before. That's because they were different poly groups. Um, and you can do a lot of cool things with poly groups, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Um, Z remesh just gives us nice workable topology. You know, uh, but let's add a belt onto this character. And the way you add belts and clothing is twofold. It's uh, masking, which is remember if you press Control and then mask uh, and you draw on the mesh, it masks it off. And this can do really cool stuff by itself. You know, like masks are super powerful. So if I go and clay build up now, start pushing on this surrounding stuff right here. 
and then undo the mask by dragging again, like, like those underlying polys not affected at all. Not affected at all. Uh, but yeah, so first step is mask off something. And then we're going to use something called extract in our sub tool palette right here. Sub tool, very bottom, extract, boom. See that? So it's, it's making some new geometry. Uh, it's not actually made yet. You have to click this little accept button once you're happy with that. But yeah, but let's get a good mask in here first. And I'm going to left click, uh, I'm going to control and then left click or stylus down drag right there and see how we have a loop going around the character now. So now if we extract this, I'm going to turn off double. Double means that um, it's going to push out on the on this new mesh and it's also going to push deep into the skin since this is a belt on the surface i don't need that underneath stuff so i'm just going to turn double off and then let's turn let's see what it looks like i actually like that thickness you can control how thick that is with this little spider over here uh, the 0 0.02 thick um unfortunately it's pretty annoying to deal with so usually i just press on the number and then i do like 0 0.01 uh, seven, if I want to do some some random number like that, or like a, a slightly smaller number, and then I do extract, and then I kind of rotate the camera around. I'm seeing if that looks good, and it looks good, and I'm gonna accept. Boom. There we go. Now we have a nice belt here. Uh, it's a little bit wavy, right? It's a little bit wavy. Um, there's a few ways to fix this. Uh, I'll show you kind of just the brute force method. Uh, first order of business is try to try to use your move brush in your sculpting tools to sort of help with that, right? So I'm I'm going to turn I'm going to get this from beveling inward to sort of pushing out a little bit. I'm being careful not to touch the edges because if I smart start smoothing those, look at how they crumple like that. We want to avoid that. We want a nice clean edge right there. Might not happen perfectly for us, but that's fine. But yeah, so I'm just kind of building up on this with my clay buildup. Um, and then next step is I'm going to try to, I'm just using move topological. And I'm just going to start de curving this. I don't want this to curve as much. Do, 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 do. All right, all right. And we can go bigger on this. And there we go. All right, so that's looking nicer. And our next step, Z remesh. So I'm going to Z remesh half. I'm going to keep groups uh, because if I turn on poly groups, boom, you can see that these are separate groups in here. And uh, it's it's it, if you smooth groups, sometimes it can kind of get these these waviness things out for us. Uh, this is a slider as well. Oops, turn off decreases. So this is a slider. If you do zero smooth groups, it's not going to give a. It's not going to try to smooth anything on that. Um, but yeah, so let's do half keep groups, smooth groups slider up and boom. So see that automatically it's getting a lot of that that ripply waviness out of there. Um, and then if we want to, if we want to work on this main this main piece, we can use our hiding tools, which is always under control shift. So hiding, control shift. And if you want to if you want to see some, like only this kind of teal poly group, control shift and then click it. Boom. See that? Now we can feel free to sort of smooth these edges. And if we pull out on these, because the belt doesn't really dip in like this, if we pull out right here, 
and then control shift click again it's going to reveal everything you can see that it it pulled out and it stretched this thing out but i mean it didn't make that edge smooth right because if i if i just smooth on that look at how much it crumples you know so we can get some nice clean shapes this way um and then feel free to if you ever stretch things out like this you can you can do a z remesh at same uh, or double. And you can always keep your groups. You see, see that we got we got that nice geo in there. So this is, this is a quick way of of getting some some clothing in there. Um, let's do like a shirt. I know these characters don't really have shirts, but I just want to rehash over what we just went over. Um, also keep uh, keep note that these extractions pop up as a different subtool. So you always have to go to the, that starter subtool as well. Uh, I'm going to turn off polyframe. Also note that uh, ZBrush remembers that mask that you did for that first extraction. So don't forget to undo that. So I'm just going to control drag off and it's going to empty that selection. Uh, let's get a little like uh, elbow length shirt going. So I'm going to control mask. And there we go. And might as well just paint the rest of these in with just control and our mask pen tool. Here we go. And this will fit nicely in the, the those gloves you have or the gloves that we're going to make. But yeah, so there we go. We have a shirt. If we just go to extract again, it's a little bit thick for a shirt, right? So I'm going to downgrade that to let's do point, oh, point zero 0.08. Let's see that. Let's see that in relation to the belt. Let's turn that belt on again. Extract. Cut it a little bit close. Might have to go down to 0 0.006. 0 0.006. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Extracts. Yeah, it's a little bit thinner. Uh, and then let's accept. Boom. Right there. And then right away, I'm going to try to fix a little bit of, of this waviness manually. Right here. Just peck away at it. Oh, we got a lot up here. I'm just using my move brush for that. And then we can go in, re, uh, not remesh, uh, Z remesh is what we're looking for. Z remesh, uh, half, keep groups. And there we go. Smooth those groups. Well, there we go. So then you can do all your all your sculpting on on this low level. Uh, if if you have a, a piece of clothing that you really want to start de developing more, like with creases and stuff, you'll have to add that as well. Um, I would turn off symmetry for that so you don't get symmetrical creasing. It's not going to look as convincing if it's perfectly symmetrical. And so this is just a little, little crease I'm putting in there where that fabric falls onto that belt. And then uh, as, as you grow to, to like whatever you're sculpting there, Um, definitely look at some shirt reference for this. As you grow to like what you're sculpting for these, these creases, if you want to develop them more, always remember that you have your divide. So you can divide that geometry. Boom. And it instantly gets more detailed. Uh, the rims sort of lose their, their hardness. I'd say that's fine though. Like I'm not expecting a shirt to be sharp edged. 
Uh, but if you did want to preserve that, what you can do is Control Z to back before you smoothed or before you divided. And we can just insert a reinforcing edge loop here with our Z modeler. So you click on Z modeler brush. And you're, it's going to be really tiny, but you're going to get your uh, cursor over one of these edges. And you're going to uh, either stylus or mouse left click down on that. It's going to insert an edge loop there. It's going to be easier if I turn on polyframe for you guys. But yeah, so you see how it just makes an edge loop. Boom, right there. It's on the shirt now. And then we can do another one on this. And another one here just to reinforce that shape. So now, if I turn this off and I go to divide, boom. See how sharp that that uh, that cuff is? Cuff, that's what it is. It's, it's um, yeah, so you get that real, really sharp shape right there. And uh, yeah, don't, don't go too crazy with subdivision levels too fast. You always wanna make sure that your, your overall shapes are, are really good. If you do, it's like say I go into three and I'm like, ah, this chest looks a little bit like weird. I'm gonna to need to work on that a lot. You can always go down in subdivision levels with this. And look, now I'm back at that low poly. It's always easier to work um, at these lower detail, uh, lower levels of detail for uh, for kind of more macro shape changes. Go. But yeah, so that's that's basically clothing. That's clothing. If you wanted a, a little collar on this, you just mask out whatever you want to do, and then Subtool extract, extract, and then uh, yeah, this one kind of got double faced, so I might dynamesh and then work on that. Um, simply because there's like an inside and an outside of that surface, so it can get like a little bit confusing there. Um, so like the the mask on the inside was what was causing that sort of double surface that you saw right there. However, let's talk about armor plating. You know. So David's design has a lot of armor plating. If we look at this, um, and so let's let's try to get this sort of thigh shape in here, right? So what we're gonna do is go into these thighs. I'm probably gonna pull this out just to get a little bit of a larger surface to work on, kind of thickening these up. But yeah, I can use more polish on my end. Like I'm not gonna, I don't wanna wait here all day doing some thighs though. So let's get into the armor plating. So it's the same, same premise as the other ones, right? We're gonna do an extraction. So I'm selecting out the shape and let's look at our source material. So they start kind of thin and they, widen out and wrap around the leg around here now i don't know exactly what they're doing on the side but i'll just make it up it's gonna be fine but yeah so there we, we got that now we can go into geometry all right we're sub tool extract probably need to up the thickness on this Oops, see, I, I got caught by that classic trick. Um, if I turn off the visibility on these other ones, I had this mask still up here. I'm just gonna control and alt to reverse this mask. So now I can kind of deselect this. I can paint out this stuff a lot there. All right, now let's try and extract. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Yeah, 
And I'm going to accept that. I'm, d I'm down with this. Seconds, auto saving. Now there's immediately like a lot of wrinkliness on here. Let's, let's see if we can save some of that. Let's see if we can Z remesh, uh, keep groups, smooth groups, and go down half. Let's see if we can kind of get past that. Yeah, look at that. Look at all, all those, all those shapes, you know. Um, unfortunately, we might have to destroy some of this uh, smooth shaping. You'll see why. So I need to kind of build up these forms, right? Like this armor plating is like a little bit round. So I need to do some, some bigger brush strokes like this. And let's go in. I'm going to alternate smooth to get a nice even surface there. And yeah, it's going to fall apart. So what I want to do is kind of dynamesh at a higher resolution. Oop, this got a bit too thin. That's why you're seeing that like weird ripply hole. What we can do to, to help alleviate that is either up the resolution or use our inflate brush. I'll use the inflate brush. We're gonna go beyond. We're gonna go beyond that, the, the, our original silhouette. We're gonna really bully ZBrush around here with Zebra uh, with uh, Dynamesh and Z Remesh. So here we go. Let's try Dynameshing again. There we go. Not as many holes. Not as many holes. There we go. So now if I smooth this out, you can see. It's it's pretty thick mesh right here. And I might need to Dynamesh at a smaller resolution now. So it's more workable. Do, 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 do. Yes, yeah, so we're just kind of working on getting some nice Nice round forms right there and just small little touches of the brush and then going back in with our uh, our smooth brush. Oops. There we go. And I'm I'm doing alternate smoothing. I'm not I'm not holding shift. I'm holding shift and then going in, starting the smooth and then pulling back out. This is getting a little bit crumpled in here. So I'm going to inflate on the inside. Might have to turn off the other character to properly inflate this. If we're really, if we're really worried about this geo as well, what we could do is just delete it because it's facing towards the inside of the lake, so we don't really need to see it. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna inflate this more so we don't run into that weird clipping issue when we Dynamesh. There we go. All right, so now we have some pretty clean, some pretty clean uh, shapes for this armor. It's just very, very, a lot of just gentle movements and smoothing. But then we need to define that hard edge. And uh, there's a few tools for that. 
but uh, I like to use trim dynamic. And we can just kind of cut in here. See that? Let's turn on the, the main character again. But we can really just carve into that surface right there. Make that hard edge again. Uh, alternatively, you can also use H polish. Um, the hot, the default hotkey for that is BHP. Pretty annoying, I know, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, I find H polish doesn't destroy the form as much. A little bit easier to work with, so. Uh, but trim dynamic really gets you going as you start to carve away. But yeah, so there you go. That's some armor plating for you. Go. But yeah, so that's your that's your armor plating right there. Dunzo. Dunzo. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, at, at, a, at a certain point along this, I would also go in and Z remesh as well. That way you get some polys following this, this geometry. Like see how this is like doing nothing right there. Um, I'm gonna turn off keep groups for that. Let's do same then. Z remesh right here. It's going to think for a little bit. Oh, there you go. You can do another pass of H polishing if you'd like. You can do it to both sides of the of the edge that you're trying to make make it uh, that you're trying to make hard. And yeah, sometimes doing a uh, damn standard with alt to kind of push out on this can help to find that lip. You can always go back in with H polish harden it up again as well. But yeah, so that's why hard surface stuff is a little bit it can be a little bit difficult in ZBrush because it takes a lot of bullying, patience. But it's possible. It's definitely possible to do.
All right. So let's hit up some, uh, let's hit up a little bit of dinner. Or, uh, yeah, 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 let's do dinner. Let's do some dinner. I'll be back at seven, and then I'm going to talk to you guys about the uh, high poly to low poly pipeline. High to low poly pipeline. That's going to be sick. It's going to be very dope. I'm going to show you what we can do in substance and like what we can do with these sculpts, right? Because we got the, I was mentioning retopology. And so there's a few steps between there, but I'll show, I'll show a little breakdown of that to, to show the, the modelers where we're going with, with the, uh, the end of the class. Uh, if you're doing just like the, the three week projects or something, uh, you might, you might have a better shot at doing that sooner so that's why I'll, I'll, i'm showing it right now but uh but yeah so yeah i'll be back at seven i'll see you guys then Resume court recording. My God, I just, I just got caught up in the moment, guys. You know, I just wanted to get the, the the lecture out there into the world. But yeah, so this is the shield that I'm I'm making. You know, and you can see all the all these little grains in here. I, I went in with the, the damn standard brush, boom bang, and started just. I mean, obviously, I was using a smaller version than that. Um, but yeah, and so it, the end result is this, and we have like a, a few materials on here. Uh, but our total points, guys, 6.87 million. Ooh, baby, that is a lot. That is too much, in fact. That is too much. Um, so what we need to, what we do before that, uh, before sending it over to Maya, is something called decimation. And you can find that in your Z plugins. This is, don't, don't worry about the, the fine details yet. Like, I'm not expecting anyone to bake maps on these characters that they're making. Um, uh, but yeah, you go to, once you have something that's like high poly like this and it's been sculpted on, you go to your decimation master and then you pre-process all your tools and then you decimate all. And it's going to bring it down, this percentage of decimation, it's going to bring down your poly count to whatever this is at. So at 20%, it's going to be one fifth of that 6.8 million. So it's going to be like one point something million in there. Um, but yeah, you can go as low down as like 5%. You, you can crank it super far down. Um, so yeah, uh, so you decimate that um, because if you export just a raw like scene size that's like that has like a, an object that's like 6.8 million polys, like it's going to be a fat file. And when you bring it into Maya, Maya's going to be like, dear God, what drove you to make this attempt upon my life? And then like, just slow down when you're doing the quad draw. So, um, so yeah, so basically this is our, in the, in the high to low poly pipeline, this is our high poly sculpt, right? And then you're like, well, I mean, Mike, you were talking about a low poly part of the pipeline. Like what exactly is that? And uh, we're getting there, you know, we're getting there. And this, I, I do want all of the um, people making a character to, to follow, and not, not like right now, but I'm saying later in the class when you have your high poly done, you're gonna be going through this step called retopology. And let's wait for Maya to fully load. Oh dear. There we go. All right, so oh, almost there. Let's go to recent files. Let's open up shield wrote retopo.mb. And basically it's you can see oh, you can see this is my high poly shield, right? Um, I have split it up into it each of its components, right? Because we're gonna bake maps for this. And each of its different, uh, each of the different shapes, right, are kind of sitting on top of each other. And if you bake maps like that, just regular straight out of the box like that, you're going to get some like 
like say, uh, say if you were baking maps on your hand and then you were baking uh, like some data onto like this, on the inside of this finger, as it shoots its uh, little rays across your surface onto your high poly, uh, it would be shooting through your other fingers. So you'd see that data getting projected onto your other fingers and look wrong and broken and stuff. So that's why we break this stuff up into different uh, into different little groups like this. And uh, it, it just makes it a lot easier to bake out the stuff. Uh, so this is our high poly. Uh, you can see that I decimated down to about, uh, what is this? Three, like two million polys. So that's still a lot for sure. Um, but you know, you gotta, you gotta make a lot of polys to get some, I mean, it's why they call it the high poly, you know? Uh, and then I'm gonna hide this. Boom. And you can see my low poly now. Ooh, what is this? Look at this boy. So, so clean, so low poly in here. Mm, delicious. What the hell? And here's the main benefit, right, guys? So if you have all of these, like if I select all of them, you can see my poly count here. That's only 1,700 tries. Only 1,700. And the majority of that is just here, 1,080 in this, in this top of the shield, you know? Like you could definitely simplify this and uh, get even less polys, you know? Um, but yeah, so like that's, that's, this is one part of the magic, right? So we have our high poly and then uh, I'll just give you a quick little preview of how we made this shield. Um, let me unhide this high poly by shift clicking there. So if you click on say your little boards right here, uh, and we can go to, uh, we can make this surface live with this button right here, boom. I gotta have like three outliners and two of them are useless. Let's see, yeah, there you go. So I just made that wood part live. I can click on everything else, but I can't click on that wood part. But what we can do is go to our modeling toolkit in quad draw. So I clicked on the quad draw right there and you just start making points on the surface. Ooh, okay, okay. If y'all are feeling a little bit spicy right now, then, then you're on the same page with me, you know? You're like, I know exactly what's gonna happen with these verts that we're putting down. Is that they're gonna be, they're gonna become faces right before our very eyes right here. So I'm just laying out points and then I'm shift clicking. Don't worry when we get to this step where I'm gonna give it a proper lecture. But yeah, you just do that around everything. And then now you have your low poly sitting right underneath the, uh, the same, the same level as your, uh, as your high poly, like they're, they're basically occupying the same space, right? So if I shift hide that, there we go. You can see all that. And it's, it's split up the same as that high poly. See how I have the same naming convention, wood high, low, uh, wood low, metal rims high, metal rims low, rivets high, rivets low. Uh, so they, that way substance is gonna know, it's gonna be like, they, these are like gonna, they're, they're trying to be the same thing, right? Um, and so with that, I'm gonna close Maya, simply because Maya takes a lot, or uh, Maya takes a good amount of, of of memory up and substance takes even more. Uh, I might be able to get away with leaving ZBrush just minimized. Let me do that. And I'm gonna pop open Substance Painter. Ooh. Ooh. And so I'll just show you the 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 end result. I'm just gonna open up Shield Painter file three. We're gonna go straight to the to the end, my friends. So with that super low poly in place and named right and partitioned into those different groups and UV'd, um, we're ready to bake maps. And yeah, we're gonna be using Substance Painter. Super nice, super intuitive program for this. 
Um, well, some of it's a little bit counterintuitive, a little bit of it, but um, I mean, I'll, I'll make sure you guys know what's going on with that, the parts that are. Is this going to be uploaded, Mike? Yep. This will be, it'll be in the same, I, I just resumed recording. So it's going to be part of the same fat video. But yeah, look at this now, guys. Now in Substance Painter, we, we put some some fills over these over these objects. Sorry, my computer's glitching out. But yeah, look at that now. Mm. Mm. This object's like, it's like what, a thousand polys, but it has all that detail from the, uh, oops. Uh, f it has all that detail from that super high res sculpt that I did, right? So we just bake that straight onto there. And don't mind this, uh, that, like flickering that's going on there. I think that my computer is actually just dying. So I'm going to close down Unity as well and ZBrush and hopefully alleviate some, some memory. Unity, please. Unity notoriously takes eight years to close. It's like that person that won't leave after the party's ended. And you're just like, bro, why are you still here? I'm trying to like clean and go to sleep, but you're just talking about space right now. Like what? Unity has fear of missing out. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, well, we, we, we party with unity pretty, uh, on the, on the suspiciously specific, that's, that's just a part of life. Everyone's been there. Uh, and then ZBrush, I'm going to close this one down too. It's, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was just 100% it. Like, we just did not have the memory for all of that. <laughs> My computer was just making so many, like, jet noises. But, yeah, like, look at this shit. You can, you can like, de texture all that up. And, yeah, it's just baked out onto, like, you can see the, how my UVs were laid out. And you can see that substance has, like, each of your different material. Like, I really needed to name these something else. But you can see how, like, each different aspect of this is layered on top of each other. You know, this is like that, like warmness of the wood. This is that base wood color. It's so sick, guys. Iron base fill copy. Ooh, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna mess with that. Cause that shouldn't be affecting the wood, but it is. Let's say, let me fix that real quick. I'm just a bit OCD. That's all. Don't worry about me. Iron base filled. Copy mask, paste into mask. Boom. There we go. See, I tried multiple times to paint that. But yeah, this is like, it's like the last and like most important step of the pipeline in my opinion, right? Cause this is where you get your like finished product. Um, in other, like in ZBrush as well, you can extract some of these maps, but you have to do some little bit of like a setup. Uh, this is literally like painting a 3D printed model. Yeah, right. It pretty much is. Like if we go into, here we go, there we go. So now I'm on my, my uh, let's do, uh, let's name it so I don't forget paint, uh, white paint mask. There. And if 
I get my paintbrush going, make sure I'm on one grayscale. You can just straight up paint in this detail. And this, these runes, I just kind of yoinked them and then used them as a stencil, you know, to, to sort of paint on there. And I, I sort of projected it onto that. Uh, and I, I mean, I'll, I'll go in that, into that later. But, uh, but if we go into our texture set settings, you can see all, it's really tiny, but you can see all of the maps that we, that we uh, baked out, right? All of the maps, all the maps that got baked out. And it, it's just, I'm excited to be able to, to share this part of the pipeline with you guys, because uh, you can see like the, the sort of end result that you can get. And for, for people making their characters, like this is what you'll be doing as well. Uh, but instead of a shield, it'll be your character and you're going to bake out each of those maps. You can go into, you can watch, uh, I'll just run a bake for you guys. Uh, get our high definition mesh. Got all of them set up. Anti-aliasing. Yeah, and here's where that um, that little the naming conventions came into place, guys. So this is finally where they get inserted into the, into the pipeline. Um, and you do by mesh names, so then it's like, it's looking for that that wood low. It's like okay, found it, and then it's like oh, is there a wood high? Then it finds that too, and then it it bakes it. Uh, in the past, in order to not get that that kind of baking onto it that I was talking about, uh, you'd have to do something called an exploded mesh. So you'd take each of those different chunks and then just physically move them to a different spot in Maya, like super far away from everything else. And it was torturous and dumb, and I hated it. And I'm so glad that they do this by name. Um, but yeah, so now let's go to, let's just bake mesh. Let me get uh, the camera in a certain spot, in a better spot for this, so you can see what they look like. And I'll, I'll, just, talk, I'll just call out which maps it's baking while it's doing it. So bake mesh maps, all these look fine. Bake mesh maps, so that's normal. This is the normal map, it's green, blue, and red. That's your lighting information. Uh, this is your world space normal, so it does both at the same time. This is your ID map that, that's going to bake in your different poly groups, but mine weren't set up like that. Uh, ambient occlusion, that's basically think about your contact shadows when you put like your hand on a surface. So at each of those grooves, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bake out like a shadow in there for that, for that little contact section. And you can see that it really adds a lot of fidelity there. Curvature maps are really cool. It kind of like detects when the surface bends and it increases and then it marks it as such and you can see like the effect that it got there and then the last one is the position so it's just like a little cur uh, color map ba that's based on like just uh, the coordinates in the scene and it will bake that color based on like those x y and z coordinates um, and those are all used for different things you know um, so like with that ambient occlusion map the the, uh, uh, the that that white and, and black one, uh, you can see it better if I turn it on to display that mesh maps. Like with this one, this is what I'm using to kind of uh, multiply across those uh, different textures on the wood, because I was like, oh man, I'm getting a lot of good wood grain sort of uh, detail in here. And so if I go into material and then if i dig into my layers let's look at let's look at this one let me turn off the the top paint but yeah if i go in here so i'm basically masking off like I, i'm using this material with uh like that's it's just tiling across everything so it's this like orange warmy let me open up the folder you can see that the material is this like orangish wood like an ochre sort of warm color in there and it is being multiplied by this ambient occlusion map this little this little thing right here that's that remember that the ambient occlusion is that white and black so you so I'm, I'm telling it to like only show on the parts that are white because i figured that those ones would be more pushed out, right? That white isn't in a groove. It would have that sort of warmish color, you know? Um, so that's, that's, and you can see that's kind of drawing upon those in there. 
and then you just can you can crank up these sliders to do cool shit like see how i can like make it take over more of that surface and then dial it back and be just very faint so you have once you understand what all these things do you have like a lot of cool control that you can do, uh you can use on the surface but yeah so that's just a little glimpse at the at the future for y'all um and this part's really this this part's amazing i fucking love substance i'm upset that photoshop was taught so long at the school because <laughs> think about trying to do this shit in photoshop you're like okay i have my ambient occlusion and then i have to tile like this this world space texture across my model and hopefully it looks good and then you have to like worry about like seams on your on your uh on your model it's just like what the hell dude that ain't that ain't living life that ain't living life but yeah so i'm excited for when we get to that part but keep in mind there, there's a lot of steps before that right so you have to have your high poly sculpt then you have to retopo it which is going back in and laying in uh different verts you can look at my uh art 426 class because they're doing that right now um you can see that they went back over the character and just quad drew every single vert on the character again right and uh yeah it was time well spent because they uh, have it working now. They, they're having a lot of issues there. Let's see what else. Just when there was more. This is older. Let's see, our sharing channel. But yeah, you can see how they're kind of laying the quads across the model. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a, you can get some really cool, really cool results. But yeah, so that's what's that's what's awaiting you modelers in the future. <laughs> Motion seller, I need your strongest butterfly piece. <laughs> You can't handle my strongest tea, pea flower. <laughs> I fucking love that video. Oh man. But yeah, so that's that's a little glimpse for y'all. Um but yeah, it's a little bit of a ways off. It's a little bit of a ways off. Benny, if you wanna since your hammer is so developed, you could just go into ZBrush and um, use Dynamesh. At like a really high resolution on that on that low poly model, and then um, start like etching in stuff, yeah. kind of making that high poly sculpt, and then uh, yeah, if you UV up, if you UV that thing up, and then bake out your maps, you'll you'll be good to go. Start doing some substance stuff. Would it make sense to continue on experimenting with the hammer for the three weeks, or just have this project carry over into the rest of the semester? Uh, that depends on your goals, you know. Um, because I, I think it's good to do a small project to start with mm -hmm. that way you get a handle of each different aspect of the pipeline. Cause there's always going to be little gotchas and it's be like, ha, you didn't, you didn't, uh, some of your UVs are overlapping, uh, some your mesh is non-manifold. Like there's gonna make a lot of like random small detail shit that you can get tripped up on. So it might be good to get that out of the way with a smaller project and then so you can be a bit more ambitious and know like what's gonna come at you with a bigger thing you know okay sounds um, good so yeah that's what i would recommend cool hell yeah um look out tomorrow i'm gonna try to uh push forward on like a little uh series that's kind of going over each of those steps with this shield so you could just kind of apply that same workflow to your model um of course you already had the low policy so you don't really have to do uh retop retopology but yeah all right well the rest of the class is just going to be 
kind of work in progress stuff. So uh, if you have anything that you want me to look at, if, you have, if you're running into any problems, let me know. Um, and yeah, I'll be able to help you out. Um, a, a common question is like, how do I delete things? Um, and it's one one small button that's in just all of ZBrush. Uh, it's like the, it's like that extract tool. It's just another button that you have to know about. Um, but I, if you're if you're deleting sub tools, it's it's a little bit different. You just click on the sub tool and then click delete, and then it's like, hey, you can't do this. You know, you can't undo this. Like, watch out. So make sure you want to delete that. Uh, but say you wanted to delete part of this mesh, right? So there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, the simplest is if you have different polygroups, you can delete other polygroups nicely. Uh, with Control and Shift, I can just click this thing, this top one. So now I only have this outer polygroup. And this is how I like to work with clothes. Um, and you just click in under Modify Topology, Delete Hidden, boom, and it's gone. So now, now if you were to unhide that mass or that, that little hidden selection, you'd see that it's just completely gone. Gone forever. Um, and I, I like to work with clothes like that because then you don't have to worry about like uh, it like crumpling in on itself. You're only dealing with that outer shell. Uh, and then I go back in later and then I extrude out that the rest of that clothing. But uh, but yeah, so that's, that's how I deal with them. Um, another way would be, so let me delete a little bit uh, like another part of this. So I, what if I mask this out, right? I suppose I could also do my, uh, the, the same, the control shift as before and like left click, drag it across and then delete hidden. And then I'd only be left with that chunk um, or vice versa. If I did it this way, you know, I'd only be left with that. Uh, but say you had something masked off that you wanted to delete, you could, um, there's a, there's a few options. This, the, probably the easiest would be to go to sub tool, split masked points. Boom, that pops it off into a different sub tool right here. And then you can just delete that sub tool. It's probably the fastest, probably the fastest, but, uh, but yeah. So just, just a few options there. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Small, small little delete things tutorial. So remember that if you, if you run into a situation like, man, I really wish I could just delete this, um, that'd be sick. Um, there's also like for this ear, I want to have a big chunk cut out of this, uh, rat's other ear. Cause he's like a scrappy boy. You know, he probably, uh, he also deals with a lot of explosives. So, uh, he probably blew it off at some point. And, uh, the perfect candidate for th that is our trim brushes. So if you hold control and shift, you'll see that you have your selection, right? Where you can normally just do that. Um, however, Hold Control and Shift and click on this. You can get a nice uh, trim curve in here, or trim circle, or trim lasso. Uh, and let's, let's try to use some of these. So let's go to trim lasso. And I'm holding Control and Shift. And if I drag in here, I want a big chunk out of this. Let's see if we can get some nice looking. There we go and nothing happened. Uh, it's m composed of multiple subdivision levels. So let's go up a subdivision level. You can see how the mesh changes its appearance to be smoother there. Uh, and let's delete lower and let's try it again. Whew. Right here, nice, nice. And let's see, slicing mesh. And ah, damn. So it did the, the opposite of that. So let's try. Let's try getting all of the rat in there. Right there. And doing that same slice. Let's see if that works. And it kind of worked. Uh, but yeah, these slicing brushes can be kind of kind of a little bit temperamental. Let's try a more clean slice. Yeah, that, that works pretty well. But yeah, so it's, it's a good way to get rid of geometry as well, uh, the slice brush. Um, it has its own uses. As you can see, it's not like perfect. Uh, 
And usually it gives you gives you some bad sculpting geometry here. So if I turn on the polyline, you can see that's just a bunch of triangles randomly across there rather than some nice smooth quads. Uh, but yeah, that's your slicing and uh, dicing and deleting tutorial. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. This is looking this is looking way cleaner. I think that might still be a little far, but it it well, you'll just need to speed her up before. Okay. So like that that little stutter step that she does right before she leaps. Mm -hmm. You'll just need to make her cleanly go. Because uh, she needs to be traveling at like this lateral speed right there. Okay. As she's leaving the ground right here. So like, and she can't just go from like zero to 60 right there. She needs to like during this part, like after this little hop, sort of get that speed going right there. Okay. Um, okay. See you later, Che. Do, do, do. Okay. And yeah, so let's see. Let's get apart with weird joint stuff. I think there's one in the beginning that I had missed. I've just been like copy and pasting the foot position so they don't turn like that. Yeah, yeah, perfect. That that that's that's an easy way to get like some solid yeah. foot plants. Um it's uh, right after that, I think. Right here. It's like the last little, um, it's called a PK arabesque. It's where her leg goes up super high. Right here, you're saying? Yeah, but the one right after that, where she's facing the front, but it's the last one. I think oh. I can fix it. Let's see. This one right here? Let's see. Uh, it looks like there's just like an extra key in there somewhere. Oh, oh, right here. I see. I see. Yeah, that's probably that's probably gimbal lock or or gimbling. Um, let me show you how to fix that. Um, they kind of broke the tool that easily fixed it in the past. Um, which is really cool and really dope for us. Um, but we can give it a try. We can give it a try. Uh, do you mind sharing your screen? Sure. Um, oh, gosh. I just got, like, another screen, so there's just so many things happening. <laughs> I think that's it. Nope. I, I'm seeing Maya in there. Oh, you are? Okay. I'm not, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> so uh, drag through to see where. Right there. Yeah, okay. So select only the foot. It looks like you have the waist selected as well. No, it's just white. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right. So uh first save your scene so we don't destroy it and then go to uh in your graph editor go to the curves menu at the top then go to euler filter it's e-u-l-e-r filter it's like halfway down the uh yeah that one click that boom and then then uh, play forward on that section let's see if it That did something. There we go. All right. It's fixed. Yeah, so that tool used to be like 100% effective. Um, nowadays, it's like 70% effective. Huh. Usually works. I don't know. They, they did something, and it's kind of upsetting that it doesn't, doesn't work as well anymore. But uh, but yeah, that's how, you, that's how you fix it right up. Bet. Thanks. No problem.
would have saved me the last hour, but it's cool. We're good. <laughs> Fine. You could have asked sooner. Yeah, I know. I just didn't think about it. I figured there was an easier way, but you know, the brain cells don't got them anymore. The brain cells. Oh no. They left. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, the remaining ones asked the question, so you weren't stuck on that forever. The knee is still kind of jiggly. Would I just do the same thing to the knee controller? Uh, no. See, the, the knee is jiggly because uh, your getting hyperextended so that that foot control is going beyond where that leg can stretch and so it's hitting that wall and it gets like jittery yeah um so you'll just need to keep that that foot control um closer like a little bit closer to the uh the hip okay that way the knee can slightly bend it's it's the when i said that this scene would take a lot of polish to get like perfect like this is the kind of stuff that i'm talking about because like hyper extensions with this sort of big arcing motion are can be really annoying to do yeah and um yeah if anything it, like this this would probably be, be easier to do in fk in some spots you know like when they lift that leg up you could just in fk rotation just rotate each of those joints up that way you don't have to deal with the hyper extension but then you have to switch back out of it when it yeah. contacts the ground. So it's like, it's like a, it's a, it's a trade, you know, it's a trade off for sure. Yeah. But yeah. Word. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. 